Hello again, this is Al, K0CN, and in this video we're still looking at the RF kit power amplifier, also known as the B26 RF 2K Plus. Here we'll be looking at using and programming the auto tuner, which is part of the RF kit. Here you can see the ATU board, the auto tuner, as I've removed the cover and it contains a number of inductors and capacitors and a series of relays used to switch different values of L and C in and out of the circuit. Also in the upper left hand corner you'll see the pickup unit, the board used to measure the SWR for the amplifier. For this video I'll be using my Flex 6000 series radio, specifically a Flex 6700 along with the RF kit. In the screen above, the interface for the flex radio is on the right side, and the interface for the RF2K is on the left side. They are connected by a CAT control cable, a USB cable, which I described in my previous video. The CAT control allows the flex radio to transmit frequency information to the power amplifier, and the controller on the RF2K Plus translates that into band information so it can follow along as I change bands and to recall frequency specific settings we'll be saving for the auto tuner. We'll talk more about that later in the video. All right, let's take a look at the tuner controls and we'll start by first going to the menu. In the menu window, we will go over to settings and over on the right hand side we have a group of buttons for the tuner. The first button will allow us to enable or disable the tuner. If I close this window and go back to the main interface, you'll notice that the tuner circuit image has been replaced by the RF kit logo. I'll turn that back on. And right below that button is another one for memory. There are 10 memory banks, 0 through 9. By clicking on the button, you can sequence through. All right, let's close the settings window and go back to the main interface. You'll notice on the upper right hand side the circuit is displayed and the screen also indicates we're under cat control. In the tuner window, the first control we see is manual. If I press that button, it'll switch to auto, which gives us the auto tuner functions. We'll talk about that later in the video. But under manual controls, this means that I'm actually able to control the values of inductance and capacitance in this network. That's achieved by clicking on the little greater than and less than symbols. So if I click on the greater than symbol, I'll increase the inductance by 0.08 microhenries. And if I click on the double greater than symbol, I'll increase the inductance by 0.8 microhenries. And similar for the capacitor, if I click on the greater than symbol, the Capacitance will increase by 5 picofarads. The double greater than symbol will increase by 50 picofarads. And by clicking on one of the less than symbols, the component values will decrease in a similar manner. By clicking on the letter K, you can choose between an inductive or capacitive input for the tuner network. The next option is bypass. When you press the bypass button, the tuner network is switched out of the circuit and the tuner is totally bypassed. If you press the button a second time, the tuner will be switched back in line. The next control is the tuner reset. This allows you to reset the tuner if necessary. The final control is the store button. This allows you to write into memory the values of the components and the frequency. Okay, next let's take a look at the auto tuner function. First of all, we'll need to set the exciter, in my case the flex radio, to a power of about 5 to 20 watts. I use about 10 watts, and that seems to work well for my setup. So we'll move to the tuner window and change from manual to auto, and then we'll move to the pass bypass button and make sure the network is switched into the circuit. We'll go to the Standby Operate button and make sure that's left on Standby or in the red color state. And next we'll apply power from the exciter. So I'm going to press the Tune button on the Flex 
and that will produce about 10 watts of power to the amplifier. We'll see that the tune button is illuminated and I'll go ahead and press tune. And we'll hear the relays in the tuner starting to click. When they stop, discontinue the power from the exciter. Now I'm going to go back and reapply power and check the SWR. And we'll see over here that the SWR is somewhere around 1.2, uh, a little more than 1.2 to 1, where we started out originally at about 2 to 1. Finally, we'll make a note of the values of inductance and capacitance for future reference, and then press the store button. So I'll press the store button. It blinks three times and writes the component values and the frequency into the memory bank so that later when we tune to this frequency, it will switch to those component settings, those tuner settings, and you should be able to operate with an SWR of about 1.2 to 1. Continuing on, I noticed that there's some thunderstorm activity in the area, hence my flex baseline is going to be jumping up and down a bit, but we'll ignore that and go back to the auto tuner. We were able to find a match to the antenna using the auto tune function. We could probably optimize that a bit going back to manual and then adding and subtracting small values of inductance and capacitance to get a lower value of SWR. I'm not going to take the time to do that now, but if I found a better match, I would press the store button and save the newer settings. At this point, we have used the auto tuner at 3.730 megahertz. What I've discovered and confirmed by communicating with Reinhardt is that the controller of the RF2K Plus uses that information from the single point match and extrapolates different values of inductance and capacitance as you change frequency. Those values are substituted in to the tuner, as you'll see here in a second as I tune up and down the band. I'll slide down from 3.73 to uh, 3.5, and as the slice receiver changes frequency, you can watch the values of inductance and capacitance change. I'm also hearing the relays clicking components in and out of the network as those values are changing. Okay, I'll get down here to about 3.52. Close enough. Now let me apply that 10 watts of power. And we see that the SWR is 1.38 to 1, still under 1.5. If I go in the other direction, let me go up to about 3.8, and I'm going to change frequency uh, quickly here. 3.75, 3.8, and now let me apply power, and you'll see that the SWR is 1.3 to 1. If I take the components of the tuner and bypass them, and again apply power from the flex, Notice that the SWR is 2.6 to 1. And with the tuner back in line, we see a 1.3 to 1. Well, I have to say I'm quite happy with the way the tuner performs, and I know I'll be spending more time looking at refinements with the manual tuning option in combination with the auto tuner. I also expect that upcoming versions of firmware will have additional improvements. Well, I think that's about it, and I'll bring this video to a close. I also want to put out a big thank you to all those that have gone through the effort and put together YouTube videos that have helped us along the way as we work on this project of building the RF2K+. Well, I certainly hope you found this video was useful, and I want to thank you for watching. So with that, we'll wish you all good luck, good DX, and all the best from Al, K0CN73.